interested in doing a go ruck competition, but you have limited time to work out, watch this. Our next caller is Justin from Tennessee. Justin, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, how are you guys? Thanks for having me. Uh, we just had a real quick question. Um, I was listening to your recent podcast regarding how to maximize your 30 minute workout. Uh, I've been doing go ruck events since 2019. And these events are some of the most difficult uh, endurance events out there. Some of these events, 12 to 14 hours in duration. Uh, additionally, there's plenty of PT and miles while carrying a various amounts of weight. So I have a kind of a two-part question. Uh, one, in your opinion, could I still get the fitness level that I, I kind of need with the 30-minute time frame workout and still perform well? And I guess really my main question is, uh, if you guys were going to train for one of these events, how would you approach it? Oh, Ooh, man. Man, 30 okay, minutes 30 training minutes is, and then your goal is these oof. these events? Yeah, that's tough. So you can get, I mean, you can get pretty far, yeah. but I'm going to be honest with you, Justin. You know what? You'll get really good at the first 30 minutes of that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you'll crush that <laughs> yeah, opener. Yeah, crush yeah it. it's, it, it, it's going to be really tough because it's so different. Like what you need is a, endurance. a specific type of endurance, you know, 12 hours 24 hours build up that work uh, capacity yeah where you're just moving and and i would look here's how i would train for that i would do the occasional long ruck uh as part of my training and then i would do a little bit of strength training and i do mobility work and uh, but but i would definitely at least once a week i would do a long hike that would be a few hours and then maybe once a month a really long one to because kind of, you have to nothing's going to get you as prepared for what you're doing like training like the competition itself. Well, what do you guys think about him using like the work sessions in strong for his strike training type of routine and then doing what you're doing saying is yeah. once a week or once every other week he does like a long old, you know, ruck type of a run, like the combination. Yeah, I mean, that sounds good. Yeah, I mean, I it's about the, the same thing. I feel like that's the, the direction I would go. If I'm limited to my, my time of lifting during the week, I only got 30 minutes, I'd probably lean you towards the work sessions that we have, especially since a lot of it has to do with like carrying yeah. and stuff like that. Stuff well, that maybe benefit. even then one or two of the actual like foundational workouts from strong, you know, during the week and then adding in just the work sessions were the main focus and then having that yeah i yeah. think i think that would all be valuable yeah J justin do you have uh would you be able to schedule like two long hikes a month or is that not does that not work as well yeah yeah, yeah. I, can, I can definitely do that i've i've done uh multiple 12 mile go ruck events and i've, I've done 150 miler and um so yeah, yeah, I can get. I, I've got several days where I can put in some, some a lot of miles. Yeah, I think if you did a couple a month, that would make a dent. That would definitely make a dent and, and improve your ability to do the competition. And then the rest of the workouts, you know, you could you could do the work sessions from Map Strong or the foundational workouts for Map Strong. Well, now that I know that we're working with that, okay, so that also changes my advice a little bit. So if if I could get you to commit to me to to four days, you know, so maybe they're a weekend day. Or this is going to be kind of our endurance training. We're together. I'd have a a day where, so let's say, I know I'm getting ready for an event. Say whatever the distance is, 25 mile, 50 mile, 10 mile, whatever you know the distance is. I would then do uh, four 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 times four times in a month, so one time a week, and one time I would go quarter the distance. One time I'd go half the distance. One time I'd go three quarters distance. One time I go full distance on what the main goal is. Does that make sense? So like if we were training for a go ruck event that. The, the, the miles is 25 miles. I'd have one day a week where I'm doing a quarter of that. One day a week, I'm doing half of that. W one day out of the week where I'm doing uh, the three quarters and then one. One in one, one whole week or you no, mean in a, a month? month. In a uh, month. One week, one week, one week. I yes. Get yeah. You get what I'm like saying? That. I like that. So he's only one time a month. Is he even doing anything close yeah, to I like the, that. the full distance? Mm -hmm. The other time he's doing three quarters. The other time he's doing a half. The other time he's doing a quarter of it. And then his training during the week looks like strong work sessions. Now, can you describe, I mean, at least for the audience too, and I have somewhat of a semblance of what rucking is or entails, but uh, can you describe a little bit more about that? Like what kind of like backpack and what kind of weight load you're carrying around? Yeah. So uh, typically, you know, I, I, the pack that I use is from Go Ruck. I have a, um, a 3.0 is I guess the name of that specific bag, but it's a backpack type of bag and then they've got sections in there where you can put weight in there so you're carrying you know uh and there's kind of two different sections of, of events like you have one that you're just doing a lot of miles with your select team and then you're doing uh they have other ones where you're doing it as a large group but it's over 
you know, you don't really know what you're going to be doing, but it could be over 12 to 48 hours, depending on which one you want to do. How much but, weight's in the, in the bag? Yeah, yeah. So you'll have uh, in your bag, you're going to be carrying anywhere from probably 20 to 40 pounds plus whatever else they bring for you to carry around. So hmm. you can carry um, you know, that amount of weight up to, you know, 120, 40, 60 pounds, depending, not the whole time, but you're going to be sharing that load with other people. Okay. So, so you actually share it with a, do you also, are you able to load it in the front too, or is this always loaded in your back? Yeah. As long as you just carry it, I don't think they really mind how you do okay. it. You know? So uh, sometimes I mean, some people are carrying it, sharing it just by carrying it in their hands. Um, you know, they put it on top of their, their, their ruck bags mm-hmm. Um, you know, depending on what the object is, you have to carry if it's a telephone pole or if it's a, you know, a large sandbag or uh, another person, you know. Um, so, yeah, just uh, considering that all those different types of loading, I would I would, you know, definitely try and emulate that as much as possible, especially sandbags and, uh, you know, front loaded carries versus, you know, back loaded carries and incorporate that within your training, too. Yeah. No, yeah, I think what the advice Adam gave was a great one. I mean, you don't have to do long, you know, endurance type training often to gain the benefit. I think the advice he gave was great. And then the majority of training is around mobility strength. You can do some high intensity interval training, continue to build, you know, some of that stamina. Um, And I think that should be, that should be okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cause so kind of what I'm doing now is besides getting my miles in, Bill Rook also has like a, an SRT program, kind of like a sandbag work training program where you're doing five workouts a week, uh, where you're, you're working out with, uh, your ruck bag and your, and sandbags for whatever you have. And so they have different workouts for you to do to kind of help prepare you for that. Yeah. So, so let me interrupt you there. That, that's cool. Okay, but I don't know what this program looks like, so I'm going to be just you know kind of speaking out of my butt here. But oftentimes, when they when these organizations create these workout programs, they overdo it. And what I mean by they overdo it, like okay, yes, it's important to train with your bag, but if you want to gain strength from a lift, you're better off with a dumbbell or a barbell. That doesn't mean you eliminate the bag. You want to work with the bag with some of your training, but some people go too far, and it's like all you know, all the training has to incorporate something from you know, my particular yeah. sport and the programming sometimes off, you know, so I would take some of that stuff and, and individualize it for yourself and don't yeah. throw out some of the traditional strength training. You don't need to do much of it, but don't throw okay. that out because you'll gain a lot of benefit from that as well. And if you don't have yeah. map strong, by the way, Justin, we'll send that to you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's really what I wanted to hear. If y'all thought that that would be good to supplement with, with my run training. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yep. Excellent. Okay. Thanks for calling in, man. Yeah. Thank you very much. No problem. Yeah. Of all of the, I don't know, stamina, endurance type sports. This is the one I would I would be yeah. most likely to try. I'm just interested because it's gaining a lot of popularity. It is. And uh yeah. I, I think uh th- I mean this was this was like a hunting thing, right? Because yeah. you had to carry I thought it was a military. I, yeah, definitely military. That's where it came from. But also I I've seen because in hunting you have to like Oh, like carry that, a, it attracts guys that are into hunting and stuff yeah. like that. My 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 best friend's brother, um, when I first got in it, he was actually doing this a long time ago. I didn't know what the hell it was. He'd like call he he when I was already a trainer, he'd call me up and ask me for advice on his training. He'd be like, yeah, I'm into go ruck. I'm like, Adam, do you want to ruck? Excuse yeah, me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I have what? no idea what that is. And then I remember him sending me over the challenges. Like, oh shit, this is intense, dude. That's a lot. So it's a it's what would be hard with someone like this is what it limited it to thirty minutes. And, the sp- and you're training for like the super long stamina. Yeah, for endurance, um, that's rough. But if he if he could get if he could dedicate one day a week for me that he could go spend you know an hour or two towards the endurance aspect of it, I could do it. I could build yeah, it up yeah. like I was to saying. To be honest where- with you, that's what I would do anyway. If I trained for something like this, it would be one day a week of something specific, right? The rest yeah. of it would be more tailored around what I need, you know, with mobility and strength. And then one day a week would be a really long you know, simulated hike with, with weight. Cause honestly doing it more than that or too often might even be too much. Yeah. They're just breaking down all the time. Totally. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here and be sure to subscribe.